This week on the Baseline Podcast, Josh and I are joined by Blaine Crane from the Crane & Company Podcast, and we talk college football. We talk everything from coaching changes to transfer portal to recruiting to finally the college football playoff, and we give our predictions. And then, of course, we have to talk a little Christmas at the end. All that and so much more coming up on the Baseline Podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Baseline Podcast. I'm Ben. That's Josh. And we have the one and only Blaine Crane with us because, hey, we had David on a few weeks ago. And obviously, we have to top that. It's, it's oh, easy. Well, guys, hands down. Yeah, easily. So yeah. Merry Christmas, Blaine. How is uh, the holidays treating you uh, down there good, in Nashville? Merry, Merry Christmas to both of y'all. The holidays good so far. I'm kind of disappointed in myself a little bit. I haven't watched a single Christmas movie yet. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. There's so many, there's so many sports on, and you know, eleven thirty rolls around, and you know, I just don't feel like up to watching Christmas. We might uh, watch a little Bruce Willis tonight. Uh, yeah, you know, true. Hard, which is a Christmas movie. It is. For it is. Hundred percent. Grow up. It definitely is. But going good, man. I'm supposed to expect a lot of snow down here tonight. So, question is, what is your favorite Christmas movie of all time? That's the question. You know, it's it's a hard, it's a hard. I got two. You know, Elf and Grinch. Ooh. you know they're right here dude <laughs> the grinch jim carrey my favorite as well i haven't seen you that know. one so i'm yeah. kind of behind i'm not as far behind as you but i still got some catching up to do the grinch man you know it's just a a, a childhood you know lived by it you know lived by it religiously you know dressed up one time asked him for halloween i know it kind of doesn't mix but the elf <laughs> was there too but the older like the older i get the the less i like elf but the older I get, the more I like Grinch. So, you know, I'm kind of in that boat. Home Alone it still works out for me. It's more and more easy to relate to as you get older. Yeah, it really does. Home, I'm not a big Home Alone fan. I'm going to be what? honest. It was, like, so it was actually I'm doing a segment called It's Mid on the show, and I actually did the Home Alone series. I did see that. It'll never I happen. I mean, hear that, but... Listen, you know, the, the first movie I enjoyed, but anything after that, I wasn't. A fan. So they just came out with a new one in 2021. And it's actually honestly better than all the other crappy ones that came after one. So it's actually they've okay. actually made some progress. They have okay, made some well, progress. Then I need to get around to watch that. Yeah, there you go. Good. Okay. It's on it's on it's on Disney Plus, but you know, that's woke Disney. So um, yeah, you know, you know. the only people I really pay right now is Elon Musk. You know, that's a, <laughs> you know, I support Elon and free speech. And you know, I get, you know, Jake and Dave kind of crap on me for being the blue check but it's not for the verification it, it, it's for what it stands for right you yeah, know yeah, yeah. from guys who like jake and david who give money to woke corporations such as amazon <laughs> and netflix and disney plus excuse me if i give money to a guy who's trying to protect my freedom of speech so. hey gotta, you gotta go there <laughs> gotta go there josh what are we talking about today with mr crane on the show and we got a nice range of college football topics we started the uh, college football season with Blaine, if you guys remember, and we were asking him about Auburn football and Brian Harson, <laughs> and I'm sure he was ecstatic when he got fired. But hey, now you guys got Hugh Freeze running the show. How awesome mm. of a move is that for you guys? Uh, I know you kind of were hoping for uh, prime time, and Jake's kind of been beating the drum for Hugh Freeze since <laughs> basically mm. week one. But now that it's done deal, how do you feel about Hugh? You know, thank God Harson left. You know, from the beginning, even last year, you back and look last year, the, the games that Auburn lost uh, were, was because of coaching. The guy couldn't recruit, and I always said he was a house cat at Boise State, right? He got his food brought to him, didn't have to leave the house. But down here in the SEC, you got to be an outside cat. You got to go hunt, all right? And Hugh Freeze knows how to hunt, right? You can al already see that with the recruiting right now. He's done more than two weeks than what Brian Harson did his entire career at Auburn. I thought Kiffin was going to get the job. I had inside sources tell me Kiffin was basically 80% there. He ended up turning down the contract, which is uh, in the long run, I think it'll be better for Auburn. But Hugh Freeze, one, a schematical wizard, right? Two, knows how to walk into a living room and compete with the best, Saban, Kirby, and all these guys. And he signed like three offensive tackles, which Auburn hasn't done in like three years. So he's already <laughs> winning. I expect great things for Auburn. He knows how to win big games and big moments. So I think it's a perfect landing spot for Auburn, and the future is looking pretty bright. Mm. Yeah, that was one of uh, my favorite hires of this offseason. We've seen a lot of other moving around. So in a prime time going to Colorado, um, everybody's expecting, I guess, a, an insane offseason for that football team, uh, whether it's transfers like Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders both mm -hmm. going over there. That was kind of a given. But uh, we'll see what other big names he can kind of haul and if he can get any freshmen. What do you think of uh, 
the hire. I think it's great for Colorado, but I'm curious to see if Dion can hire a staff and uh, I guess get some player development going. Yeah, well, the thing about it, it's, it, I mean, it's a gap stop hire for Dion. Obviously, he wants to be somewhere bigger. But, you know, it's working already for Colorado because we're sitting here talking about Colorado, <laughs> you know, who hasn't been great for since, like, the last time they won the championship in, like, the 70s or 80s. I can't remember exactly what year. Um, but I think the Prime's going to do great. If you can recruit, right, which he can, and get good hires, which I think he'll, he'll, he hires a guy from Kent State who runs a phenomenal offense. Um, I don't know if they have a defensive coordinator in there yet. But I think Prime would do fine. I think Prime's going to be at a big power five in the next three years. Um, it's not going to be Florida State. Mike Norvell's balling right now. And they're, they're, but what they're, what they're bringing back next year, I think they have a legitimate chance to be a playoff team. Um, so I, I, I don't know where Dion will end up landing. We'll see how the Billy Napier hire works out for Florida, which I don't think he's going to be there that long. <laughs> so I wouldn't yeah, be surprised. I know this might sound crazy to some people if Prime ends up at Florida. Josh, how do you feel about that, Josh? As oh, a no, man. Fan. I, feel like, I feel like Billy's got to get – like, he really has some cleaning house to do, man. Getting uh, the culture fixed, getting some of these, like, child porn watchers out of the building and stuff. That was wild. That was wild, dude. And, honestly, Anthony Richardson, I think he's honestly, like, a sixth-round talent at best. Good riddance that he's gone because Billy didn't even seem interested in having him run as, like, a dual-threat quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's more of a pocket passer. It's like if you can't utilize the talent in the, that you got in the locker room right now, then uh, maybe it's just best that you know AR either takes off for the NFL or transfers, and he's going to the NFL to be a bust. So good for him, I guess. Hey, let me ask you this: you right now, if you're taking AR fifteen or Will Levis, <sighs> <laughs> that's yeah, the real good luck. Question. Yeah. Well, how about this? We'll go with AR just for the possibility he could be a tight end. Maybe. How about that? Mm. Okay. Arm talent wise, I don't like either of them, but you could at least take advantage of Richardson's freakish athleticism, maybe switch positions, and that could maybe work. I, the, I don't think either the, will work as a quarterback. The thing that makes me think AR 15 could work is because of what Jalen Hurts, uh, the strides that Jalen Hurts made. So you go back to Jalen Hurts, he was never a phenomenal passer. All right, he has high IQ in football, but never, never a great passer. And I think AR 15, the size, the arm strength, if he could get tuned up, Right, and he could get put into an offense that's not crazy, a play action offense, everything's somewhat easy. I think AR has the highest ceiling probably as any of these guys in the draft. If it's me though, I mean I still think the best quarterback coming out is Bryce Young. I don't care if he's five foot five and thirteen pounds. That dude is built different. That guy sees things like he's Doctor Strange. He's opening up portals, he sees this, he sees that. I think anybody who probably passes on Bryce, especially the Houston Texans will be the biggest mistake they'll ever make. They definitely got to take a QB there. Uh, I know Ben's probably shaking his head right now since you said Bryce is the best quarterback. Why would you take Bryce over someone like C.J. Stroud? I'll ask the question for him. Um, well, versatility. I think Bryce is one better in the pocket, and Bryce can run. Um, I think uh, Bryce is a better anticipatory quarterback. And I think C.J. in big games, I mean, let's go back and look at him. Big games, C.J. hasn't had his best games. I think C.J. is the most accurate quarterback. In, in the draft right now. But I think, like, Bryce gives you more as a complete package as a quarterback. Hmm. Any disagreements, Ben? Ben? No, I mean, I, I've always said, and, and Josh knows this, because on the show I've always said this, my biggest struggle with CJ is this, that the dog that has – we've seen the dog at times this year. We've seen that dog in him at times, right, against Northwestern. Mm -hmm. Throwing was not happening. He goes, fine, I'm going to run the ball, Right. But in Michigan, against Michigan, last year he had the flu. He did have a great game last year, better than this year against Michigan. But I will say this. I think if you look at Bryce Young versus is CJ Stroud, it's almost like it's almost like this is how I put it. It's almost like putting a shooting guard versus a small forward. You have two different types of quarterbacks. And it's and for me, I always feel like most NFL teams are gonna want Bryce Young, I feel like now, because of his mobility, ability, and things like that. But then you're gonna have teams that are going to want C.J. Stroud because he's a guy that's mm -hmm. very accurate and he's got an arm strength and he can make almost any throw you want. I mean, look what Marvin Harrison, I mean, when you have that guy on the team, it does not matter where that ball is thrown. Mm -hmm. But I think with C.J. Stroud, my biggest concern with C.J. Stroud as a guy that's watched every Ohio State game is that I'm worried he will not be able to consistently, like when there's pressure, will he be able to make the throws? That is when he has struggled the most, is when – He's had pressure in his face and those kind of things. And that's where I mentioned against the Georgia game, which we'll talk about later on. 
if if high state can keep him clean i think there's a good shot that he has a big game and i think that's the biggest thing with cj stroud is he's not comfortable quite yet to roll out and really get set in his throws um mm-hmm. and so that's my biggest thing with cj well i i, I like your comment when it comes to shooting guard and small forward but i would change it somewhat somewhat to point guard small forward mm-hmm. right bryce is a point guard who can shoot right he's got the handles he can pass and he can shoot cj is more like clay thompson right he can yeah. strip it all right he's not he's not going to beat you off the dribble or anything like that he can actually stroke it from the three but right now if i'm going to complete package guy well i think bryce is way better out of the pocket um you know what well, better somewhat feeling in the pocket than cj but at the end of the day, we're splitting hairs here yes, some, somewhat, course, yeah. right? Yeah, both of them are phenomenal talent. Both of them are going to have great careers in the NFL. As long as, he doesn't, as long as he doesn't go to the Bears like Justin Fields, and then they ruin him. But, you know, that's just me as a high well, state. Yeah, well, the, Justin Fields is literally doing it all by himself. Right? <laughs> he literally is. All by himself. All by himself. <laughs> he literally all is. Himself. Speaking and of when quarter- people say this, let me just say this real yeah. quick. When, when people say that Justin Fields – can't survive playing this way i disagree i watch i don't care if josh allen's seven foot three josh allen is jumping over people (laughs) for first downs getting crushed every game and surviving so i feel like justin fields he's a big dude somewhat survive right and and justin fields has one of those things he's one of those guys where where he does get tackled it's hard to square him up right it really is especially in space justin fields is going to be fine the bears have to figure something out the best receiver is darnell mooney who got hurt. I think they have Komet at tight end right now, other than David Montgomery is their best player. And if your best player is Cole Komet, God, God help us all. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, speaking of uh, quarterbacks and stuff, stay on that type. We've been seeing a lot of college football kids in general hit the portal. I think they said over oh, a thousand. Day, but a lot of them have been oh. quarterbacks. We've been seeing a lot of movement, like Devin Leary to Kentucky, DJU to Hawaii. Uh, is there a quarterback what? out there right now that you'd love to see Auburn go and get? Uh, well, yeah, the kid from Coastal would have been great. Um, great. Grayson McCall oh. would have been great, but it ran into some credits or uh, uh, a certain major that Auburn didn't have. Make it up. Just make up a major. <laughs> we, all know that's what the, we all know that's what the SEC does anyways. That's all they <laughs> yeah. do anyways. Yeah, make something up. Please get him to Auburn. Um, <laughs> you know, right now, you know, Devin Lear to Kentucky is just a weird fit to me. That is weird. It's yeah, weird. It's the last place I saw him going. Yeah, but right now, I don't know. I don't know. I think know. you got the biggest names available right now would be like Brendan Armstrong and Hudson Card. Yeah. I think Hudson Card can be a great fit somewhere. I wouldn't mind Hudson Card at Auburn. I think Brendan Armstrong is really a low key talent. They have nothing at Virginia, um, <laughs> including an offensive line. He is a lefty, which worries me. Um, but I feel like he'd be a good fit in, in an Auburn offense. And I think Hugh Freeze can do, can do somewhat well with what he has right now. With Robbie Anderson. I don't know how much you can fix him throwing the ball wise, but you can fix him somewhat. He's not going to be perfect, but that dude can run it. All right. I mean, that dude can run it depending on Hugh Freeze's offense, which is a spread offense. He wants to air it out somewhat. Um, but right now, you know, quarterbacks a need, but God, man, they just keep getting offensive linemen. At this point, there's nothing more that gets me more excited as an Auburn fan when offensive line signs. Uh, Cause at the end of the day, that's what you need. And Auburn hasn't had that in years. And going back to the Bo Nix days, there's a reason why Bo Nix went to Oregon and ball. Two reasons. One, it's a Pac-12, and two, he had an offensive line, right, and had somewhat <laughs> weapons behind him. The only reason Auburn won a game with Bo Nix is because of Bo Nix, nothing else. So, trust in Hugh. Um, let's just find a way to get Grace in there. Let's just make something up. Right. Yeah, I'm kind of with you, man. That's very on SEC like to not make up a major so you can go and get a really good <laughs> for quarterback. Yeah, what's going on? Come hey, on. make make a golf carting course. I don't know. Just make something up so the guy it's can. Like, get I don't there. know what the like. It's like a sports management degree or something like that, and it has to do with credit. So it's just, have sports management. It's sports something. It's probably not sports management. I'm probably not 100 percent on that, but it's sports something. I don't know what it is. You know yeah. what? Uh, you would just think the SEC would have just been able to pay off all the people in the school, and they would have just been able to sneak yeah. in there. Yeah, you know? I thought so too. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, there's there's still plenty of lot out there. I know what, that. What was be what would be Blaine? What would be your biggest su- the biggest surprise move for these transfers that you were kind of more shocked? I know you said Leary, but is there any other ones that are like, oh, that made sense, and this one just didn't make sense? Like JT, JT Daniels going, Daniels yeah, that's what I say. Yeah, you know, just is weird to me. <laughs> I would like JT Daniels at Auburn. The kid can sling the rock. I know he's been at 13 different schools. He's like 37 <laughs> years old, but Rice. 
I mean, yeah. Rice, guys, we can go play quarterback at Rice if we want to. I think JD JD Daniels is a better talent to be at Rice, so that's always a weird fit. I mean, DJ U to Hawaii, I get it. I mean, he's he'll be done. an upgrade to whatever they had. Um, DJ U is going to be mediocre at best. Um, but he's the only reason why Clemson lost games. So, other than that, you know, I know Drake May just didn't get offered like thirteen million dollars to go something play somewhere like else or something like that. Ridiculous. Which isn't worth the money. The kid's going to be an absolute stud. He's like thirteen years old and doing stuff what he's doing right now. <laughs> it's just so much movement. I whoever gets Hudson Card is going to get a good quarterback. I, I really believe that. I think he shined at Texas, and whoever gets him is going to get a winner. All I know yeah. is, yeah, all I know is that this NIL money needs regulation or else you're going to have quarterbacks that are going to have nowhere to go because this, this, yeah, well, the thing up. about it was well, a lot of kids are going to learn that the grass isn't always greener. Yeah, of course. It's just not. A lot of kids, you know, you see the big names get picked up, but you're going to see a lot of kids not get picked up anywhere. And they're going to be sitting there stranded on the island. And I mean, it's a lesson they're going to have to learn. I mean, it's basically free agency, agency boys, is what it is. Yeah. yeah a to play. College see football a lot now, of A to play. See a lot of those, uh, I guess, your third string three stars that want to leave after their freshman year that think they're going to find a new home and then they just get, you know, they're, they're stranded in the portal. What yeah. the, everybody's been throwing around that graphic from 247. I think it was uh, like only 52% of the kids that enter find a new home. So it's like, what happened to those 48%? They just, they're done now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you either, you got to learn the hard way sometimes. Right. You're really, you're not as, as important, as good as you think you are. And I think after a few cycles of this, like kids are going to start to notice that. And then it's going to mm. like fix itself maybe soon. Cause we know the NCAA ain't going to fix it, but no. never. The NCAA yeah. only causes problems. They don't fix anything ever. Exactly. So even, even a Josh even says something about JT Daniels. If he can't figure it out really in his own mind at West Virginia, how can he figure it out at Rice? Just kind of like, like he was at USC, yeah. then he was at and then it was West Virginia, and then it was Rice. And that, I mean, that's the biggest drop-off right there. Yeah, I mean, Rice is not an elite program at all. So, I mean, not JT even- Daniels, he'll be, he will be a big fish in a small pond, which probably fits JT's character, to be honest. Um, but still, the last place, if you'd have told me where is the last place you think JT Daniels would, would have gone, it would have been Rice. It have been up, Yeah, it would have been up there on my list, too. Mm-hmm. But, boys... We got some college football playoff games coming up. Yes, First sir. Off, did you have any issue with the top four teams and the order that they were ranked in? No, I did not. I think they got it Thank right. Thank you. Yes. I think they, they got, got it right. It right. Finally. Alabama did not deserve to be in the playoffs. You lost two games. All right. You lost two games. And Saban came out and turned into a car salesman, which I get. <laughs> got right. to. He's got to. Nick, I get it. Right. It makes sense. You have to do it. But uh, I think he said, well, what would be like the, what would be the projection of who's winning, uh, who they put in the playoff? Well, Nick, you're supposed to be – you were projected to win both those games you lost. All right? So That's I don't want to hear any of that crap. TCU deserved to be in the playoff. Hell, they beat like eight ranked teams throughout no. the year. All right? So I, I, do I think TCU is going to get beat Michigan? No. Would they probably get rolled? Yes. But I still think they deserve to get in the playoff to get rolled. Yeah, at the end of the day, the regular season's got to mean something. And just because you'd be favored, it's like, okay, well, how many games does Texas get favored for that they end up losing? And then, like you said, both mm-hmm. those games that Alabama lost, they were favored in. So it's like, just because you'd be favored doesn't mean you're going to win. That's why you play these games. Yeah. And it's not like overall, Florida. You know, it's not like Florida that just chokes games all the time. I don't, Sorry, Josh. We weren't favored to – were we favored to beat Utah? I don't remember. But <laughs> Y'all are a one-and-a-half point favorite. I remember that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that, but I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> Just there's some of them random things. But yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, Blaine. I think uh, the NCAA, or not the NCAA, but the playoff committee has more so than not gotten the four teams. But then the order has been what has kind of been skewed, and it's just because like personal biases and matchups that they want to like see happen. But personally, I thought TCU being at three instead of Ohio State was the right decision because TCU. With the undefeated regular season, and their only loss is in the conference championship game in overtime to Kansas State, whereas Ohio State's only loss came in rivalry week on their home field, getting blown out by Michigan. Yeah, and it's a team that TCU already beat, right? So yeah. they're proven to be able to beat them. And if TCU would have got if TCU would have got blown out, I think we'd have be having a different conversation. But it was a last possession game, and Ohio State got absolutely rolled in that game, which I still don't know why Ohio State defensively did that. I, I don't know why they're just all out zero 
no safety help over the top. I think that's a questionable scheme yeah. uh, against Michigan. I know Michigan can run the ball, but yeah. still, if you're getting beat by J.J. McCarthy like that through the air, something's messed up. Yeah, I think it, I, to answer your question, though, I, the statement, I guess, is I think Knowles, the way he's coached all year has been like that. And it, it bothers me as an high state fan because I know it's a new scheme. He runs that three, that th- basically that three, three, five, basically, um, which is fine. But the issue I had with was if you're going to, my dad always used to tell me, he was an old defense coordinator. He used to always say, if you're going to blitz, you better get there and you yeah, better get there fast. Don't blitz from depth. Yeah. And the issue was it they did, they blitzed two, two safeties, but they were, they were 15 yards deep. Like it if you're going to blitz them, get them up, get them up in yeah. the line. I'm all for I'm all for showing everybody in the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I'm all for it. Line of scrimmage, they have to guess who's coming and who's not coming. You really don't know until after the play. But once you start bringing guys from depth, all right, I'd rather you rush three, and I hate rushing three. Oh, it kills me. I'd rather you almost rush nobody if you're going to rush three because <laughs> you're going to get against a good quarterback. You're going to get sit back there and get picked apart. That's what's going to happen. Um, but. You know, it's just it, – it, it's somewhat strange. Um, but I think Ohio State, you got to be happy someone with the matchup you got against Georgia yeah. because I think you get rolled against by Michigan. Um, I think you – I think you beat TCU, obviously, but I think it would be a hell of a game. But if you're Georgia, this is the last team you wanted to see in the playoffs. Yes, I agree. Because, I mean, what you go back to the LSU game, right? Jane Daniels somewhat beat him through the air. Then Nussbauer came in and fall. I think they threw for over 500 yards. Yeah, they did. So you saw some weaknesses um, in Georgia's secondary. Tom Luganville came on the show the other week and, and, and was – well, God, he was saying something about, um, you know, rolling out quarterbacks is what it hurts Georgia. Um, yeah. Guys who can run hurts Georgia. And I was like, well, you know, someone I can get that, Jane Daniels. But Nussmeyer is not the most elite afoot, all right? He's not right. burning a 4-4-4-5. Four, 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 and he came out and knew how to work a pocket and beat Georgia in the secondary. These receivers, right, with that quarterback and C.J. Stroud, if they can keep him off the ground, all right, they have a chance in this game. The only thing that scares you if you're an Ohio State fan, Georgia's going to do a lot of this. Hike, hike, and yeah. hand the ball off. That's three-headed between, the, between the ends at Ohio State, it's not looking good on the other side of the box. But I don't think they should come out and run zero pressure. You will get – Seth and Bennett will kill you. Uh, yeah, he will. Yeah, like let's let's talk about that matchup first. It seems like Stetson has had some of his big games, biggest games in some of their, I guess, biggest games this season. Like the Oregon matchup, balls out. Mm-hmm. Uh, SEC championship game, balls out. Tennessee game, balls out. Like Ohio State's defense, it seems like is. And then better I, than the, last year. It's better than last year. It is better than last year. But and then flipping out like to Ohio State's defense, they all the notable quarterbacks they played this year, like Sean Clifford and JJ McCarthy and Talia Tagovailoa, it seemed like they all had their best games when they played Ohio State. So it just kind of like that matchup there to me looks like potential trouble. Even yeah, as, as um, it, is, it is to say that about Stetson Bennett. I never thought I'd say that, but it's like Stetson Bennett could be a problem for this. Ohio Stetson State. Bennett's having look, look, y'all know me. I'm not the biggest Stetson Bennett guy in the world. All right. Like you, we could, anybody last year could have played quarterback for Georgia and won the national championship. I'm sorry. I mean, you score 14 points, you're basically going to win. Right. This year, Stetson's been balling. I know it's his 30, 33rd year in college. Um, he's basically older than Lamar Jackson, um, which is fun, which is funny to say. Um, but yeah. Stetson right now, he's really dialed in this offense. Him and Todd uh, Monk and are literally on the same eye level when it comes to this offense. And if you're Ohio State, you win this game in a track meet. All right, now, that's how you're going to win this game. You need it to be a track meet that fits your type of, uh, of style of play rather than just grudge it out for four quarters. Because if you try to grudge it out with Georgia for four quarters, they're going to have to start bringing stretchers on that field because these guys are built different. This offensive line is like 6'7", 6'5", 6'5", 6'6", 6'7". And here's Darnell Washington, who's seven foot eight, And here's Brock Bowers, who's an absolute that's problem. Crazy. Uh, yeah. I will say, though, I will say that the one thing that Ohio State has done well this year is that they do very good in pass defense against running backs and, and tight ends. Did you see the receivers would... that he brought up on his show? Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ohio was apparently second in defending tight ends and running backs in the past game, which I don't know how important that is considering that in some of those games like Penn State and Michigan, there were wide receivers that were doing all the burning. So it's like the tight ends and running backs didn't really need to be involved. But notable, considering that Georgia's top weapons are 
all tight ends and running backs. I like, would agree with you. Con- I think stats and graphics matter until you face Georgia. Yeah, of course. Right. And then you throw it out the window because you're not going to play a guy like Darnell Washington all right, in the Big Ten. You're not going to play a guy like Brock Bowers in the Big Ten. You're not going to see guys, Lad McConkey, the white Haru over there playing receiver. Uh, you'll see that in the Big Ten, but they're going to get Mims back. I mean, Georgia's going to be fully loaded in this game. So Ohio State, you just got to run with them. Right. You just have to if you're Ohio State, you just need a chance in the fourth quarter. If you have a chance in the fourth quarter, that's where you want to be. I will say this, Blaine, though. I do believe that if there's a team out of the uh, there's, you know, two teams. But I think Ohio State, one thing is they're they they have speed like an SEC team. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I feel they're missing this year more than ever is some good interior defense alignment and depth and depth. I mean, I mean quality depth at the corner position in a linebacker position their corners are very banged up supposedly a high state is going to be healthy outside of Travion Henderson and obviously Smith and Jigba I think the offensive wise I think they're going to give Georgia some problems and I've always believed that if CJ Stroud is protected CJ Stroud is the best quarterback in the nation when he's protected and he can pick and choose where he wants to throw the ball he's the best quarterback you also have what I call the farmer gronk or as my dad calls him, and uh, Stover at tight end, who is the who is the X factor of this offense? He will be the X factor, and so I believe if a high state can put up twenty five thirty and just maintain contain the offense, they have a shot. Well, I, uh, the knock on the Ohio State this year, hell, the knock on them last year was what physicality. Yeah, right. You're going to find out pretty damn early in this game whether whether or not they're going to be physical enough with Georgia because yeah, yeah. Georgia's either they're going to be body bags or you're going to play with them. Georgia's one thing about Georgia, you'll never question a Kirby Smart team whether or not they're going to be physical. They're out there hunting every play, whether that's offense or defense. Yeah. What I mean, what how like how are you going to block Jalen Carter? How? That's the one thing. You want to keep TJ Stroud up. This man held up a grown man in the SEC championship and put the number one finger up. I've never seen that in all of my years watching college football. A grown man in Jalen Daniels held him up during a play, during a sack, and threw up the number one. I wouldn't be surprised if Jalen went one, right? I think he's a better player than Will Anderson. Todd McShay came out and said about some character issues. The last person I believe on this world is two people, is Mel Kuyper Jr. and Todd McShay. So I'm uh, right now, your biggest thing is we have to stop Jalen Carter yeah. from ruining this game. And the, the scary part is we have a, a, a somewhat healthy right guard, which we already know where they're going to sign a line Jalen Carter. He's going to be over that right guard because Matt Jones has not been healthy all year, and that's where they're going to line him, and that's what I'm terrified of. I'm like, you're going to have to double team, which then gives open to gaps and all these different things. So if you're so high state, block on the outside, it's unfortunately, be the most hated thing that Josh knows I hate is a first play screen pass. Watch this, Blaine. I'm telling you, first play for high state will be a screen pass out to the outside. That'll be the first play of the game. Guaranteed. Really? It's every game. Uh, it's the guarantee it's, every it's, game. This is Ohio State's thing. Bubble screens worked really well in 2021 when they had receivers like Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave that could block. But this year, their receivers aren't either they're just not interested in blocking or they're not good at it. So all the bubble screens just flop and they run about four or five a game and they at all the go begin no. the game at the beginning but of the game. It's a call anyway. Really? Like, yes. Yeah. If it's <laughs> me, I'm taking a shot to Marvin Harrison first play. Uh, by the way, I'm just going to say it's unpopular opinion. Play. Unpopular you know, opinion. Uh, he should have won the Blitnikoff. That's all I'm going to say. Should have won the Blitnikoff. That's all I'm going to uh, say. I, I don't disagree. That's all I'm going to say. Josh, yeah, even... should we give predictions, Josh? Yeah, for this I think game. We, about everything we could about this game, oh. but I'm rocking with Georgia in this one. I don't know like what the what the Vegas spread is right now, but I'd probably six say and a Georgia. half, I believe. It's where at six and a half. Six and a half, Georgia. I'm taking Georgia to cover that. I think they can win by 10, 14 points in this one. Mm. Mm. Blaine, what do you got? Oh, do you want me to go first? I'll go first. Yeah, I'll go first. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah. I'll uh I'm gonna go. Yeah, it's script. You know what? Screw it. Just because I know David would do what I would do too. You're gonna if do it Michigan. Would do. Yeah, it's gonna be a high state. I'm gonna go high state. I'm gonna go high state 38, Georgia 35. I don't think that I think it's gonna be one of those games um that surprises people with the high of scoring and surprises people with the fact that it's close. Cause I think a lot of people are saying a high state has no chance, which I love it as mm-hmm. an high state fan. So I'm gonna yeah. go 38, 35 a high state. Oh god. Give me Georgia 35, Ohio State 24. Ooh, ooh, I'm good. I'm good. We'll, we'll take it. 
I just I just can't wait to text Cone if 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 at TCU beats Michigan and high state and high state wins, man. I can't wait. Look, to we don't need Michigan to win the national championship. I'm no, not trying don't. to hear it every day on the show. You're not ready right. for that yet. I'm not trying to hear it every day on the show. Then Blaine, never- then Blaine, will you tell me that if high state plays Michigan in a national title, would you pick a high state? Is that what you're saying? No, I'd pick Michigan. Dang it. Okay. Well, yeah, I was trying. I'd pick Michigan. I was I'm trying. sorry. They, 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 they rolled y'all at, at, on the road. Yeah. Um. So Josh. There's our picks, Josh. Next game, we have uh, – I guess I'll enter this one. Uh, so, Blaine, we got TCU versus Michigan. Many people think that TCU is going to get blown out. Many people think it's not going to be close. What are your guts to this game? What are you thinking is going to happen? Is it going to be some surprises, or are we going to see what I think everyone predicts is what's going to happen? I think TCU is going to play good for three quarters. Um, but I think Michigan in that fourth quarter is going to start leaning on TCU like they've done to everybody in the entire year. Michigan in the second half is a problem this is how you know they're mm-hmm. huge up front they start leaning on you in second halves of game they're probably the best second half t- team in college football i feel like max duggan's gonna have a good game because max is an absolute warrior but uh, things are a lot easier when you can just play defense and turn around and hand the ball off all yeah. right this, it makes life a lot easier i wouldn't be surprised if you see tc run a lot of trick plays in this game um just to go all out but i think michigan's just a better team overall um, I mean, TCU is going to hang. This fits TCU's narrative, though. Now, the entire year they've been dogs. The entire mm-hmm. year, everyone's doubting them, right? But sooner or later, you run into somebody that when it, it just doesn't matter, you run into a wall. Michigan is a wall, right? So they're going to physically dominate TCU on both sides of the ball. Max will make some plays with those great receivers they have. But at the end of the day, give me JJ McCarthy and the boys, Donovan Edwards, who's an absolute stuff for a backup running back with the weapons they have outside. I think JJ has a decent game, nothing insane. I don't feel like JJ has to have a great game for them to win this. Um, but give me Michigan. I think Michigan by at least two touchdowns. What's your X factor in that game, uh, Blaine? Mm. Who's your X factor for both for, teams? So for Michigan and then for TCU, if TCU wants to win, it's going to be in the, the quarterback room. I'm going to say Max Duggan and, uh, and JJ McCarthy. Mm. Um, I feel like JJ McCarthy can play above average and win this game. Max Duggan's going to have to play the game of his life to win this game. So at the end of the day, when you come to the playoffs, it's a lot of keys, but it's always going to be the biggest key is going to be that quarterback. Mm. Mm-hmm. I agree, man. Uh, I know that Michigan's defense, I mean, it's incredible. And the one thing that I don't think they have faced this year is a mobile slash running quarterback. So I'm kind of curious to see how Michigan matches up against maybe a kid like Max. We know that their defense can, you know, shut down the run. We know that they can uh, shut down the pass. It's just, I guess it's a, different kind of running game when you got to worry about not just Kendra Miller you got to worry about Max maybe taking off too and you got to have a maybe a little bit maybe that adjusts what they do defensively mm-hmm. what do you think about that oh, I, I know I agree I don't think Michigan has seen anybody like Max Duggan the entire year I think a big thing for TCU is going to be staying on schedule um, if you're TCU you really want to be third and five or less a lot in this game because that just gives you the option on fourth down I wouldn't be surprised if you see more than four fourth downs Going forward, if, if TCU can ran, range in the 60-plus range on third downs, I think they'll have a chance in this game. And, and it kind of goes back to the same thing I said about Ohio State with TCU. You just want to have a chance in the fourth quarter, right? If you have a chance in the fourth quarter, you have the guys to overcome this and win this game. But the tough thing about it is there's a lot of things you can trick, all right? You can trick a good team for a quarter. You can get lucky for two quarters. Hell, maybe you can get lucky for three quarters. But it's really hard to get lucky against a physical and really – boxed in football team for four quarters all right because it's it's a physical domination we said it last year a lot like georgia it's gravity right sooner or later gravity gets involved and they're just going to end a condo they're going to squeeze you to death all right and really question your toughness i don't question the toughness of Mac, max duggan i'll never do that the kid's an absolute stud but tcu's defense all right i know kansas state's good at running the ball he responds that 13 year old can play all right but michigan it's built different. The monsters they have up front. All right. It, it, it's just different. There's no getting around that. Right. There's no lucking out of that. You're going to have to deal with that every play. And Michigan's going to dominate TCU in the box. And I just don't know if you can throw yourself to a win against Michigan. I mean, I don't yeah. know if Michigan's going to have Maxie Smith because, you know, he got arrested because, you know, that was found out two months ago. And then all of a sudden now it's coming to light. So just thought I would say yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Well, that, that, I mean, that's just up in the air at this point. Who knows what that. Yeah. Josh, what do you got, Josh? What's your prediction? I'm curious to see, and I know Michigan being the second half team that they are is going to just, I guess, be a lot more explosive in the second half. We've seen them do it in most of their games. But 
the one time I think that I think the best we've seen TCU's defense this year is against Texas when they mm-hmm. held John Robinson, I think just to just 49 rush yards, about 2.2 yards per carry. Uh, I think Quinn Ewers was had a couple picks in that game, was under 50% completion rate, and I they're going to need to have a performance like that in this one. We've seen, I think, Deuce Vaughn, between the two times that they've played TCU, averaged over 100 yards in both of those. So whatever they did against Texas, that worked, and they're going to need to bring that uh, to the Michigan game. Did you guys get to see any of those games? I did not. So uh, I, I watched really the remember. the Big 12. I watched the Big 12 championship game and the highlights of the Texas game. So yeah, I I've, watched, of it. I've probably watched mostly every play of all those games. Um, the thing about Texas is Texas <laughs> has been spotty throughout this entire year. Um, Texas up front's not even remotely close to what Michigan is up front. Yeah. Um, Texas really is not a huge downhill running team, right? Uh, Bijan, best back in the nation, in my opinion. Uh, Bijan likes to stretch you sideline to sidelines, and he will hit it downhill sometimes. But Michigan is downhill in your face every play, right? And as a defensive player, that, that it, it just hits different, all right? It hits different when you know what they're about to do and still do. But Texas, you really don't know what they're about to do. Quinn might sling it around a little. And Quinn's had some struggles this year. The kid's young. Quinn's going to be an absolute dog. But you know what Michigan's about to do. There's nothing more demoralizing as a defensive lineman or a linebacker. When you play a team, you win, you know who's about to run it down your throat, and they come out there and run it down your throat, and there's no stopping it, right? Then you're going to have to do what? Put that extra hat in the box. Next thing you know, boom, ask Ohio State. Boom, double moves, play action, we're going to hit you deep. And, and J.J. McCarthy has proved that he can do that. Now, if, J, if you get to J.J., uh, getting J.J. in the pocket, make you beat him in the pocket, then we're, now it's a different story, right? If you can stop the run, I don't think J.J. McCarthy is good enough no, to really either. throw Michigan yeah. to a win, right? The intermediate the routes, the intermediate throws from J.J. is really not that good. TCU, you just have to somehow stop the run and not get beat deep, which is a really extremely tough combination to do. It is. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right about that. If, if Ohio State wasn't getting burned deep on those plays, like it was just the receivers were so wide open, J.J. wasn't going to miss those throws. Not many quarterbacks were going to miss those throws. Exactly. So. It's, yeah, like you said, that's a tough combo against a team like Michigan. And the thing about it being demoralizing like that, like Joel Klatt's MO with uh, Michigan this year has been they know or they know that they're running the football. They know the defense knows they're running the football, and they don't care. They just continue to run it, and they continue to be successful at it. And I'm yeah. not sure that it's defensive it just, line. It slowly kills your spirit yeah. as a defensive player. It's like, it man, does. we know that they're running it. You still can't stop that's it. That's true. So. Yeah, it just slowly kills you. Yeah. So, so Josh, who do you got in this game? Oh man, I think uh, I think we're gonna see uh, maybe a three point game at halftime, but then we're gonna see two huge Donovan Edwards touchdowns in the second half, and maybe one deep JJ McCarthy touchdown pass. Uh, give me Michigan by twenty in this one. Woo! Oh, I'm going. So this is my We've thing about Michigan. Seen some playoff blowouts in the past. Yes. So a twenty point Ohio win, State's been there. Thirty or heck, a thirty point right. Or a 30 point in there wouldn't be like you know any kind of shock, I guess, for the playoffs. But this, I like Michigan by about 20 in this. This is what I'll say is that Michigan, if t- this is the thing, if a high state, I always say this if a high state would have capitalized in that Michigan game and got up by four scores, it's a different ball game because then Michigan has to, I think they'll run the ball, but they still have to th- start throwing the ball, I think, a little bit more, right? And mm-hmm. I think what TCU is, is does TCU get out ahead and do they force Michigan? to make that adjustment and that's the question what will happen my thing is no i'm not going to be that guy that says tcu because i'm a high state fan no um i will say that michigan is going to win this game i think it's going to be closer than what people expect i think it's going to be about a 10 point game i think it's going to be 27 17 uh michigan um and i think it's going to be i'm predicting a rematch of the game at in national title game and that will be so much fun i will just be jumping up a jaw and cone will be getting text messages nonstop um but that is my prediction for that uh we know that you two guys i guess you guys just are all in sync today i guess you two are just in sync but you know yeah we definitely right. called each other before uh before well, i came I from here and figured it out figured. y'all two in sync looking great in the sweaters by the way oh, um i know give me michigan 35 tcu 17 i just don't think i think tcu gets down early and i think they're trying to throw their way out of it and michigan just slowly pythons you and slowly just constricts you throughout the game donovan edwards has a big second half i think michigan's a more complete football team but kudos to tcu kudos to sunny dykes phenomenal year guys just this huge for y'all in recruiting we're seeing what they're doing that transfer portal 
So TCU is right now becoming a problem. You know, losing you're losing Texas, you're losing Oklahoma out of the Big 12. TCU can slowly make that step up to be mm-hmm. those guys in the Big 12 unless they lead to. So we'll see. Hey, that's the way it works. Uh, all I know is that well, we want to do say thank before you go, Blaine. We just want to say thank you for all your knowledge. Um, we we have to do, we have to have a vote on our on our in our comments. Who's the best guest of the Crane and Company podcast? Because we've now had all it's three me. of you on. Cone's a homer. Cone's a homer, right? And you can't trust my brother. All right, so it's definitely me. <laughs> Well, all we'll say is we thank you so much, Blaine. You always are welcome on the on the Baseline podcast. Um, and hopefully we, uh, Josh and I can make it down to uh, Nashville and Come hang on. out with you guys at some time. I mean, yeah, I have man, to fly got... across the ocean, but that's besides the point. You know? Hey, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I get it. I'm scared to death of flying, to be honest. I've done it a lot, and I hate it. Um, <laughs> love, coming on the, love coming on the show, guys. Y'all do a great job. If you don't, go check out the Baseline podcast, all the Booster Club. Go give these guys a sub. Make sure you check them out. They do hey. a phenomenal job. Hey, we love it. Josh, any final words before we, we, we call it with Blaine? Any final words? Uh, Blaine, <laughs> uh, for our listeners that don't listen to your show, uh, yeah, Blaine yeah, yeah. had a new segment, it sounds like, called It's Mid. Can we just get from you the most mid-Christmas tradition as we are about to celebrate? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> the most mid-Christmas. See, I'm not, I don't really have a lot of traditions when it comes wow, to Wow, that's Christmas. sad, man. That's I know. Mid. Um, that is mid. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the cookies and milk for Santa. That's true. That I would agree. With Maybe that. the cookies and milk because the how I learned Santa wasn't real. Is I walked down because I wanted Santa, to see if wait. The tree, Santa's not real. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> I want to oh, see if wow. the tree, uh, the presents were under the tree, and I found my dad with his shirt off eating the milk and cookies <laughs> at two o'clock in the morning. So that's how I found out Santa wasn't real. So probably I would say that tradition. Hey, all we know is Blaine. Thank you so much. Uh, we hope for you have sure, a Merry guys. Christmas. And uh, for everyone, make sure you guys go follow them, the Crane Company. They're doing amazing things. They are the new platform for what this new non woke culture needs to be. So go check them out. Go follow them. They're great. They're fun. They're like your best friends, I think. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe. But, anyways, thank you, Blaine. And uh, hey, we'll talk to you next time. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, boy.